Dear friends, welcome to this moment of prayer and reflection as we prepare for the Ignatian year. The composition of place for today's prayer reveals to us a variety of contexts. But the most significant context we find ourselves today is a global pandemic which is ravaging the entire world. It has affected all peoples in every nation and each one of us has some personal experience of some family member, community member or friend who has been affected by this virus. While many have recovered from the devastating effects of COVID, we are also painfully aware of how many of our loved ones are still in hospital or in some cases have gone to their eternal reward. At the start of this prayer, let us spend a moment of silence, praying for those who have gone to their eternal reward, especially persons known to us personally. We pray that the Lord may grant them eternal rest and solace to the grieving friends, family and community members. Let us pause for a moment of silence. As we prepare for the Ignatian year, we realize that it is indeed a moment of grace. It has brought us together and once again united us as one Ignatian family. We are united by two intense desires. First, an intense desire to respond to Christ by serving him in his mission. And two, an intense desire to respond in a manner which truly embodies the Ignatian charism. As we prepare ourselves for the 20th of May, when the Ignatian year is officially inaugurated, let us ask for the grace of generosity, to dispose ourselves so that God can transform our lives and make us better instruments for the sake of his kingdom. During this short prayer to dispose ourselves for the upcoming Ignatian year, we shall begin by listening to the General of the Society of Jesus, Father Arturo Sosa, as he outlines the main focus of the Ignatian year. We shall listen to some readings from the autobiography and then spend a few moments hearing a reflection on the Ignatian year. This will be followed by some petitions where we shall pray for the grace of this year. Finally, the President of the South Asian Jesuit Conference, Father Stanislaus de Sousa, will give a final message and offer a concluding prayer. It is really an important occasion to meet 
and to move forward towards the nascent year. This jubilee year can be a great time for a renewal for the Society of Jesus, for the entire Ignatian family, and for each and every one of us individually too. This Ignatian, this Ignatian year will start, as all we know, on 20 May 2021, the date of Ignatius wound at Pamplona. We start the celebration commemorating a failure, but it's a failure which allowed Ignatius to change his life profoundly. The cannonball launched a process of conversion which has also led to us being here together today. The word conversion can be ambiguous and even vague. What it really means is that Ignatius moved from a self-centered dream for himself, a dream about honor and riches, about being famous and important, to a much bigger dream. His new dream was no longer centered on himself, but on God, and the dream God had for him, and thus also on the people around him. He started seeing all things new in Christ. The Society of Jesus was founded to help souls. Will it not be amazing if we could use this Ignatian year to help people to think things new? To move from a too small dream from their self to a dream of the Trinity, to become involved in their dream for the world, and to be involved in their plan and their action. Only in that way we can renew. Only in that way each of us can live his or her vocation. We want this celebration to be a spiritual experience, and so it will be very profitable if we can all enter into the preparation of this Ignatian year and into the celebration itself with magnanimity and generosity towards God. Ka naam kitna 
कितना प्यारा है सब को भाता है प्रभु का नाम कितना प्यारा है सब को भाता है प्रभु का नाम कितना प्यारा Whilst in a fortress that the French were attacking, when all were of the view that they should surrender, he gave so many reasons to the commander that he actually persuaded him to resist, even against this view of all the officers, who drew courage from his spirit and determination. When the day came on which the bombardment was expected, he confessed to one of these companions in arms. And after the bombardment had lasted a good while, a shot struck him on one leg, shattering it completely. And as the cannonball passed between both legs, the other also was badly injured. During his convalescence, while reading the life of our Lord and of the saints, he stopped to think, reasoning within himself. What if I should do this, which St. Francis did, and this which St. Dominic did? These thoughts lasted a good while. Then other thoughts of worldly honor and fame returned, and he also stayed long with them. This succession of diverse thoughts lasted for quite some time until he tired of it and put it aside and turned to other matters. Yet there was this difference. When he was thinking of those things of the world, he took much delight in them. But afterwards, when he was tired and put them aside, he found himself dry and dissatisfied. But when he thought of going to Jerusalem barefoot, and of eating nothing but plain vegetables, and of practicing all the other rigors that he saw in the saints, not only was he consoled when he had these thoughts, but even after putting them aside, he remained satisfied and joyful. He did not notice this, however, nor did he stop to ponder the distinction until the time when his eyes were opened a little, and he began to marvel at the difference and to reflect upon it, realizing from experience that some thoughts left him sad and others joyful. Little by little, he came to recognize the difference between the spirits that were stirring one from the false spirit, the other from God. As the cannonball injured Ignatius and brought the battle at Pamplona to an end, it would initiate a new interior process, which would transform him from being a self-seeking individual to a saint who was enlightened and saw all things from a new perspective, the perspective of divine love. What seemed a catastrophe at one moment would turn out to be a moment of grace. We ask ourselves a question. What caused Ignatius's conversion? How did it become a moment of grace? And what was the newness that came about as a result of this experience? 
Reflecting on the conversion of Ignatius, we can say without a doubt that it was the result of a profound experience of Christ, the eternal King. Like St. Paul, whose life underwent a conversion after his encounter with the Lord on the road to Damascus, Ignatius's experience of Christ at Loyola and Manresa left him a different person. This experience was not easy. It was not a brief process. It entailed an inner struggle with intense moments of desperation that almost led him to contemplate taking his own life. However, it became a moment of grace because in and through these experiences, he let go of his false and narcissistic self-centeredness and allowed himself to be led by the Spirit of God. This experience of conversion altered his very existence and he began a new life. A new life which consisted in a radical dependence on God. An experience of great interior freedom, indifference, a profound sense of gratitude and total availability for Christ's mission. Ignatius's experience of conversion can be traced back to an encounter with Christ, specifically Christ, poor and humble. The authenticity of his conversion is seen from the fact that it led him to embrace a life of evangelical poverty and a poverty that manifested itself in three aspects. First, a personal life of poverty. Second, personal friendship with the poor. And third, the help he offered to the poor. The conversion experience of Ignatius makes us reflect upon our own life. We need to ask ourselves, as what are the areas where we need to undergo a conversion experience and embark on this process with earnestness? Let us start by having a sincere and profound desire for a new life and engage in an evaluation by placing ourselves before the crucified Lord. Only by relating with the poor and humble Christ as well as being directly involved with the poor in our context today, is it possible to experience the grace of conversion? The challenging question that faces all of us is, what am I willing to do to allow myself to be touched by the Lord and allow him to work my conversion? How will I concretely grow closer to the poor and marginalized people in my context? An affirmative answer would require a strong call to personal as well as institutional conversion. It consists in immediate and concrete changes to lifestyles that hinder the renewal of persons, communities and works. Revisiting the conversion story of Ignatius, we are inspired to live the same spirit in today's world. Ignatius's conversion to Christ allows us to believe that change is possible. It reminds us that our hearts can be softened. Sinful structures can be transformed. New ways to move forward can be found and participation in the mission of the eternal king is what offers real meaning to human existence. In the Ignatian year, we are invited to return to our spiritual roots and nourish ourselves to grow in interior freedom and experience renewed energy to live the spirit of the Majis. As we stand at the threshold of the Ignatian year, let us ask for the grace 
to be renewed by the Lord. May the experience of Ignatius' conversion to Christ result in a new apostolic enthusiasm, growing identification with Christ, poor and humble, and a greater sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, who is the source of all new life. Let us now spend few moments in silence, praying for this grace to be renewed during this Ignatian year. We pray for this grace earnestly for ourselves, for our friends, and all those who make up the Ignatian family. Let us now spend few moments in silence. For the following prayers, our response is, Holy Father Ignatius, pray for us. Holy Father Ignatius, pray for us. That we may respond to our cannonball moments with Ignatian indifference and unconditional surrender, so as to be sources of inspiration to those facing crises and tragedies and help them rekindle their inner vitality. Let us pray. Holy Father Ignatius, pray for us. That we may be driven by the spirit of the Magis and transform our natural qualities and talents into the pursuit of spiritual values and social service. Let us pray. Holy Father Ignatius, pray for us. That the power of body, heart, mind spirit resilience we obtained through the spiritual exercises may serve as continual triggers for our continual conversion and sanctification let us pray holy father ignatius pray for us that we develop the power of physical endurance and spiritual resilience so as to move out of our comfort zones and with unflinching zeal encounter the challenges and risks demanded of our religious calling. Let us pray. Holy Father Ignatius, pray for us. Thank you very much for gathering in large numbers for this virtual prayer meeting conducted in view of the Ignatian year. Ignatius' conversion takes us to Pamplona, Loyola, Montserrat, Manresa, Cardonet, Paris, Venice, La Torta and Rome. This only proves that conversion wasn't one-time event or experience to St. Ignatius. It had been a continuous process. The tool for Ignatian conversion is 
is ongoing discernment, a fine sensitivity to recognize the difference between the spirits that was stirring within, one from God, the other from the sources contrary to God and choosing God. Because of his constant discernment, he gave up not only worldly things, but also spiritual things to give greater glory to God. Now let us pause for prayer. Let us pray. God, our Father and Mother, you are a compassionate God who blesses us all. We thank you for all the blessings you shower on us. This evening we want to thank you for the blessing of Saint Ignatius. You made him a fire that kindled many other fires. In and through these spiritual exercises, he not only showed us how to seek and find you, but also taught us how to love and serve you in all things. Walking through his path, many people became different and made much, made much difference in the lives of many. At this moment, through the intercession of St. Ignatius, we ask you to bless us. Bless every person we have met, every face we have seen, every voice we have heard. And bless specially every needy person, so that all of us may be able to walk his pathway to you and make a difference in our lives and lives around us. We ask you specially to bless many people who suffer because of various ailments, especially the disease caused by the COVID-19. Bless us, O Lord, that there may be joy and peace everywhere. May all of us be healthy today. May all of us may be happy today. May all of us may be harmonious today. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Thank you for participating in this prayer service. As we begin the Ignatian year on the 20th of May, let us pray 
that we generously dispose ourselves so that the Lord effects a conversion in us, a conversion personally and collectively. May it lead to deeper fellowship within the Ignatian family, a growing conformity to Christ and a greater solidarity with the poor. Wishing you all a meaningful Ignatian year. Thank you very much. I surrender my life to Jesus. I surrender my life to God's will. I surrender my life for the kingdom of God. I surrender my life, my all. I surrender.